All right, video three, guys. So we're gonna finish up, uh, we're gonna wrap up just the making of our pinch pot. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the foot. We're gonna kind of wrap up the foot part and why we put a foot on our, on our bowls and things like that. So let's, uh, we're gonna go back to, you know, talking about primitive pots and things like that. And really, you know, pinch pots, guys, are some of the oldest, you know, pieces of art or, you know, back when they were making them back then, they didn't really think of them too much as art, especially when they were first making them. They were thinking of them as, hey, look, this is going to be a lot easier to carry my water or my food around instead of, you know, trying to cup it in their hand or, you know, uh, or whatever, you know. So when they first found out pottery and stuff like that, you know, it was it was mostly meant for functionality. It wasn't meant too much for art, art artistic reasons. I mean, yeah, they did start doing art and stuff like that, carving things into the sides of them, you know, trying to make them a lot better looking, but, you know, first and foremost, they were used for functionality. I can take and I can put water wherever we're sleeping or we're living now um, and things like that. So uh, let's finish off the foot really quick and talk, you know, um, so um, let's keep going on that. So the, the two reasons why is if you look at a primitive pot, you know, um, if you go to a museum or if you go online and you look at these primitive, you know, uh, pottery, you know, you'll notice that the bottoms were round, you know, and, and the reason why that was is for a couple of reasons. They realized that if they make that bottom round, A, it holds more, uh, and B, you know, they didn't have to, they didn't have tables, you know, they ate sitting on the ground. So all they had to do was dig a little hole and put the pot down in the ground and it wouldn't fall over. So then when we started moving into you know, building society and building, you know, get, living in a community and stuff like that. Well, then the table came around and we realized that we had to have a flat bottom. Okay. Well, another thing that they started realizing is that ceramics is not a great insulator. So when you put, you know, something in, 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 a, in a ceramic vessel, they realized that when you put it on the table or wherever it was, it quickly cooled to the temperature of that table. So by putting a little little clay ring on there and keeping your foot off of the table, you know, by hovering that up and off, it kept the stuff inside of it warmer a little bit longer, okay? Uh, that's why if you look at a mug or something like that, like something like this, you know, it's got a flat bottom because if you put coffee or something or something really hot, a hot beverage in there, you want to cool it off. This is just water. Um, by placing it on that table and that'll help the cooling process. So we don't need to lift that up off the ground, okay? So we can just have a flat bottom and it'll help cool it off. Now, the other reason is, this is one of those weird things that even though we know what's going on, you know, we put, if you put a good foot on it, something that where, you know, like, like once again, if we keep that foot just at the right size, well, it's gonna cast a shadow on the table. And as we're standing up, we really don't see that foot all that much. It's kind of underneath the pot and it gives it that hovering effect, okay? Well, we know in our brains, you know, that, 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 that it's not hovering, that there's a foot, there's something there holding it up off the ground. But we've got this part of us that's like, ooh, look at that pot, or look at that, it's, let's, let's go figure it out. So we're drawing people into our work, and we're getting them to look at it and try to, you know, kind of see why is this so appealing to me? And, you know, part of it is, is that hovering effect, okay? So, you know, keep that in mind, that if we get our foot in that right place, Okay, and, and we get it right where we want it. Well, it's going to create that shadow, and that's the aesthetic part of it, is we want it to look cool. Okay, so those are the two reasons why we have a foot. So I spent a little bit more time off camera getting this to where I want it. Once again, it's still it's still a little bit off, and that's fine with me. I don't I don't mind you know something being a little bit off, but you don't want it to be so far off that your bowl is literally tilting off to the side. So make sure that you take some time, you center it by looking over it, and then you attach your foot, and then you blend it in, and then after that you flip it over, and then you just take some time and you do these slow pinches, you know, little kind of directional pinches, you know, pinching with a purpose. You know, and you're, you know, you're forming that, you're shaping it to your, your foot, okay? By using that extra meat that we left on there, okay? Now let's go to the, the foot, I'm, or the, the, the rim, guys. I'm a big rim person. I feel like when we see a vessel that, you know, has a quickly ended rim, the only time that you should see that is um, when, you know, you're on a mug. And that, even then, that, you know, there, when we get into making mugs and stuff, there's actually a certain way where we kind of make our rims and our mugs that is still an artistic type of a rim and it just makes it for a more functional, more, you know, uh, enjoyable drinking vessel. You know, now the two rims that I'm gonna show you here, these are just two common rims, okay? Um, let me show you, Tom, I should have had these out before I started. 
but um, I'm going to show you a couple that are already done, um, and then you know we can talk about you know the way that these look, and you know they, they look really nice when they're done, and why why we call them what we call them. Okay, so these are two that I'm still working on. Okay, so let's talk about the one that we're going to do right now. This is one that's called this is the floral rim. Okay, uh, my foot broke off, so I've got to redo the foot. But that if you look down on it like this, you know it looks like. A flower okay so since hence the floral rim okay the other one that we're gonna look at or we're gonna do is we're gonna do this one this one is a coil rim okay so this is when you roll out a coil and we'll do that that next okay so this will be the second one that we do but it, it, it kind of falls in line with the you know our foot and stuff like that and it gives it a really nice aesthetic look and you know it's really nice so you know these are the two that we're gonna work on now so with the floral rim. We're going back to where we were talking about like, you know, this whole controlled pinching and why we would want to do that with a bowl. Well, so when we do our controlled pinching and we've got this body down here, nice and thin, you know, about a quarter of an inch, we want to keep it a little bit thick, especially if we're going to do some relief carving on it. And then we keep this up here a bit thicker, you know, nice and, and thick. This isn't quite a half inch, but it's pretty close. Um, and, and, and we do the thicker one here for this, this whole purpose here for a floral rim. So guys, I want you to take your fingers and you're gonna put your middle finger and your thumb together and you're gonna put your pointer finger off to the side like this. So it should look like this. And then you're gonna pinch down and pull back. So here and then here. So we're gonna come down about a quarter of an inch here, okay? So I'm about here, you know, maybe a little bit more than a quarter. And then I'm gonna pinch like this and then I'm gonna pull back like this, okay? Now, if we look here, and I know that this is cracked, and we're not going to worry about that right now, but if we look here, we can see where our thumb made a really big imprint, and then our middle finger made just a little tiny one. So all we're going to do is we're just going to slide over after we've pinched and pulled back, and then our, where our thumb made that big imprint is now where we're going to put our, our middle finger, and then we're just going to you know, kind of continue around doing that. Now, don't worry too much about, like I said, about those cracks, because we'll come back, and what you want to do is you want to hurry up and get through, not hurry, but you know, get through pinching this out because there's gonna be a lot more than just those cracks that we gotta take care of, okay? Because we gotta remember, if we fire these, or I should say when we fire these, you know, we wanna make sure that we get rid of all of our sharp edges, okay? Sharp edges are bad news, okay? Sharp edges and cracks, okay? Cracks are where food tends to hide out and sharp edges are where, you know, if you are one of those people that lick your ice cream out of the bowl, well, that's a good way to, uh, you know, redesign your tongue. So, uh, you know, take a minute, you know, make sure that this looks good. So here we go. Once again, our nice floral, our nice floral rim. So now after we've done this, now we want to go through and we're going to clean up all those rough edges. We also want to get these sharp edges out of the way. Anything that looks like it's going to be sharp, we're going to blend those in right now. Okay. So take some time, go through and you're going to do it on both sides because both sides are going to have them. You know, and we're going to work our way around, cleaning that up, getting rid of all of our sharp edges. But, you know, don't, don't go to, don't blend too much in. Just knock off the sharp edges and blend in your cracks. You know, you don't want it to, you don't want to distort your, you know, your floral pattern. Okay, and then once you've done that, I've still got quite a bit more to go, but you know, this is a, a demo video. So you got, as long as you get the idea and you know what I'm doing, you can see what I'm doing. I'm blending in my cracks. You know, I'm trying to make it look good. If you need to use a tool, if you need to use a Scrofito tool to get into some of those harder areas, you know, do so. Okay, and you guys can even take some time and like, you know, I've gone in and I've scooped these out, made them a little bit deeper. You know, with my uh, either my Scrafito tool or my my loop tool, which is another one of the tools that we have in there. You know, and you can do the same thing on the outside. And that's you know, uh, once again, uh, the the next part of this. And I, I guess I am going to do a video for this, but it's you know, relief carving. I do. I have a another relief carving video on this channel um, where we uh, where I go through and I. Um, I do a relief carving on a mug and that's uh, relief carving on a mug versus a bowl isn't much different than, you know, I mean, you know, the sides are definitely round and on a bowl and the sides on a mug are flat. So I guess I'm going to do one here on one of these just so you guys can see the difference, but it's not much of a difference. Okay. 
So that's the floral rim. Okay guys, now the next one is going to be our coil rim. And I've got this one already set up as well and I've even got my coil rolled out. So I've rolled out my coil and now we're just, I'm not going to show you guys how to roll out a coil because you guys should already know how to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, so if you watched the other video, you've seen me roll out a coil. So once again, I've already got the coil rolled out. You wanna make sure that your coil is as long, as, as round as the top, the opening of your bowl is. Okay, that's definitely a must. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that over here so you guys can see it. So we take our coil that we just rolled out and then we're going to tap it down, okay? So we're going to tap it down pretty, you know, not too terribly hard, but, you know, tap it down good enough to where we're going to start flattening it out. But, you know, we're going to flip this over and we're going to do that a few times until we get a nice flat, you know, we're trying to, we're going to thicken this up and it's going to kind of widen it out a little bit, flatten it out. You know, after you've done that and you've got it, you know, pretty close to what you want, then you're going to take your finger and you're going to kind of run it down the one side. And then I actually flip it over and I do it on both sides. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and I just clean up both sides. You know, this time, this time I'm going to pay attention a little bit more to the sides and I'm going to clean it up some more. And I'm going to get this nice and flat and cleaned up and then round off my edges and make sure that they, you know, don't have those pounding marks either from where we just flattened it out. Okay, so it's nice and flat. It should look like this, you know, flat on one side, rounded on the other. And I'm going to lay that out here. I'll pull my bowl back to me. And then I'm going to take my coil and this is where you got to take, you know, take some time. You know, I usually go a little bit into the coil itself and then I'm going to put it on the, you know, I'm going to flat go, you know, I'm going to make it even with the inside. So the uh, outside of the coil is going to go even with the outside of the bowl, the inside of the bowl. Okay. So the inside of the coil, I should say, sorry, is going to be flush with the inside of the bowl. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Once again, we want it to overlap, to overlap a little bit. And it should look, you know, so it should be nice and flush like this. Okay, so it should look like that. Now, um, let's go ahead and, so now after we've done that, we're gonna, once again, we're gonna take either our Scrafito tool or our needle tool, and we're going to cut it at that 45-ish degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, or it doesn't have, I mean, you know, a good, a good flush cut is better, but you know, like as far as like, you know, 45, it doesn't have to be an exact 45. And then we're going to take these and we pull it off. And I generally want to put this down on a flat surface so it's not dangling or, you know, we're not going to be too worried about cracking it, especially if, you know, your clay is a little dry. You know, we're going to take some time. Once again, these two are, since they're the same coil, they've got the same moisture content in it. We don't need to worry too much about scratching and scoring and adding slip. Okay. All right. So now that we've got it, we've made our ring. You know, we want it to be a nice ring like this. Okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it off to the side. I'm going to flip this once again. I want to do it to the bottom. So this is my bottom. And then I'm gonna pull my bowl in here like this, and then we're going to make sure we're gonna, you know, scratch and score the inside of our, like the rim of our bowl. Okay, then I'm going to take my coil, 
and I'm going to just gently, I'm not going to spend too much time setting it up, but we're going to, you don't need to scratch and score the whole thing. I'm going to put this a little bit closer here. You just need to scratch and score about the width of what your rim is. And since it sits flush with the inside of your coil here or your rim, you know, we just need to go in, you know, just make it about the same thickness, scratching and scoring. And then, you know, like I said, I do the, the X pattern. I would recommend this. This is just, you know, just means that it's done really good. You got plenty of score marks on here and it's going both ways. Okay. Now I take this off because I found it easier to apply my slip on the thinner on this part here. So we're going to take a little bit of slip and slip once again is just the really wet clay and that's our glue. I'm putting it down and I'm actually using my finger to get it down into the, the score marks, but I'm not blending my score marks in. I want to make sure that those score marks are just full of slip. And then that there's a little bit extra on the top to go into the other score marks on the, the ring. It's always good to have a, a towel handy, you know. Okay, and then now that I've cleaned it up, I can take my, my rim, and I generally just start with this side here, and I just lay it on here, and then I just take a minute to get it on there, and then I'm just gonna lightly start pushing it on. Flush with the inside. push down just a little bit to get that, you know, that little bond. And getting that slip to go into our score marks. Okay. And it should look like that. Okay. So it's nice and flush on the inside here. The inside of the coil goes with the inside of the bowl. Now, I usually take my wooden knife, okay? And then I uh, am going to hold, so I'm gonna hold my hand like this. And then I'm going to place my, like it kind of like some scissors here. And I'm just gonna kind of hold on to this out here while I use my, my wooden knife to blend. And I blend at kind of an angle. You know, don't worry too much about cleanliness. We're gonna come through back after this. Right now we just want to get it blended in and we're going to come back after this after we get it all the way in nice and blended in we're going to come back with a metal rib and clean all that up and then after this we have one more step and then we're done Okay, and then you just kind of let it set and dry a little bit. You want to get it to about leather hard. And leather hard just means, uh, you know, that it's, it's stiff, that it, you, you know, you can't, you, it has a little bit of movement to it, but not much. You know, it still looks wet, but it's stiff. And that's the, probably the best time to do your carvings on it. 
Um, and if you do it right, you can actually set it up to where it's uh, hard enough to where you can actually draw on it with a pencil. And if you don't want to do that, you can use your needle tool to draw it with, and then we'll use our scraffito tool to go through and, uh, uh, you know, do the, the carving deep enough and wide enough. So now I'm going to take my metal rib. And I'm just going to take a second here and clean this up, really blending that in. Making sure that it doesn't go, doesn't come back around. We want to make sure that the bowl stays open. And if you want, you can even use your metal rib to go on the inside of your bowl and make it nice and smooth all the way around on the inside. I'm not going to really do that. I, I might do a little bit, you know, I'm coming down just a little bit further. And then, you know, if I want to later, like I said, you can go through and clean that up. And so now I've got this nice and blended in. I've gotten rid of all of my little cracks and stuff like that from where the two met. And then after I've done that, then I'm going to come and soften up this edge here because we don't want a sharp edge once again. You know, take a second and soften this up. Rounding it to the outside, not the inside. Okay, and then after we've done this, this is our final step is we're going to take it, we flip our bowl upside down, and then what I do first is I kind of go around in a circle and I really kind of push this down, getting that slip and that bowl to bond together, bind together, you know. And then I've got one more thing that we're going to do, and it's going to help because we don't want this here. This is a seam or a crack, and that's, guys, that's just where food can hide, and I tell you what, Anywhere you get food to hide, it's going to hide and uh, it becomes a really big mistake one day when you've uh, tried to clean it. There's not a dishwasher in the world that'll get rid of all that food in there. And you don't want to find out the hard way what happens when you eat, you know, with something from food that's been sitting in there for a week or two or even three, okay? It makes for a really rough night. So I'm just going to lightly go around with my Scraffito tool, getting rid of that line, blending it in, okay? And then if you if it's too deep and you don't like that look, you can always come in with your wooden knife and then come in just above there, hold it up, and then just kind of, you know, you're going to take a little bit of that clay away. And I just use my finger on this side right here. And then now guys, from here on out, it's all up to you, whatever you want to do with your bowl. If you want to sit and make it, you know, more smooth or whatever, uh, you can, you can take that time to do that here, but you know, make sure that you blend in all that other stuff. Take a little bit of time, pull that away, and then there you go, guys. So our next step, guys, so this is my opinion. I've just taught you guys how to make a, uh, a beautiful canvas, okay? Uh, and what I mean by that is uh, after this is set up, 
and it's uh, a little drier, we'll go ahead and we'll start doing our relief carvings on it. So this takes an opportunity for you to, you know, take this thing that I've taught you how to do and then own it, okay, by doing a relief carving on the outside. All right, guys, um, that's the end of the pinch pot video. You know, make pinch pots, make beautiful pots. You know, by doing this method, guys, by doing the control method, um, and doing, you know, doing some practice ones, like doing these practice bowls and things like that, getting used to the controlled pinch pot method, well, um, it's going to, uh, you know, take you into being able to do some directional things with that directional clay at the very beginning, okay? And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do another video here soon. Uh, this one won't be for my students. This one will be for, you know, I mean, it'll be for my students if they wanna do something advanced. Uh, but, you know, I call all of you, all of you are my students. Okay, no matter what, even if you're not in my school and you're just watching these videos just to, like I said, learn a different method of doing a pinch pot, um, you know, I, I will do the, uh, I'll do the margarita. So I, I, I got it finished. I'll show you really quick. So you guys saw this in the first video. You saw it just, um, I don't even know if it was bisque fired at the time I did the video, but I finally, I pulled it out of the kiln. So this is it glazed and it's ready to be used. And it's really, you know, it looks really nice. I really enjoy it. So it looks really cool. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and I'll do a video on sh and show you guys how to do a controlled pinch pot getting into some of these really wild shapes and stuff. And the other one that I'll probably do a pinch pot uh, video on is, um, if I can find where I put him, right here. This isn't mine. This was actually left behind by another student. But, um, you know, I will show you guys how to do a pinch pot pig, piggy bank, okay? Uh, so the person that did this literally took it literal and did a, you know, and did a pig. Um, and then they left it behind and I just, I just wound up glazing it. So uh, I will, I'll show you guys how to do this. This one's, you know, fairly, a little bit more simple really is if you look at it, it's just two bowls put together. So you do your, your controlled pinch pot bowl again, and then uh, you, you put them together and I'll show you that method. Um, I've already started one here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll do a video on how to do those and I'll do a video and that'll be a separate video. I'll do a video for this. We just did these videos. So do these, practice this, get used to the control pinching method, you know, do the, you know, do video one a couple of times. That's not a bad idea. Uh, and then go into making some of these beautiful bowls. Uh, they're, you know, they're wonderful. I have some at my house that I use, um, you know, and, uh, these are really enjoyable bowls. So, uh, you know, guys, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, uh, you know, help grow the channel. Um, it'd be highly appreciated. Uh, and, you know, guys, until next time, peace out.